Good morning everyone, welcome back to The Budget Sportsman. I know I say this a lot, but today is a video I am super excited about, at least the adventure I'm excited about. Ever since I was a kid, I just thought it was really neat to hunt out of a boat and boat access areas. And I've never found a place, but recently I just started scouring the maps for a place that was within driving distance of home that would have some uh, boat access hunting areas, and I found some spots. So today I'm out here with Nate from Average Jack Archery, and uh, we've got the budget boat, and we also have a couple of kayaks in case we run into any shallow water. It's been super dry summer. And uh, the first spot we just pulled up to looks like it's going to be deep enough uh, to take the boat. And there's a couple of uh, big chunks of land that we can get to from the boat. So we're going to go do some scouting, uh, maybe a little fishing, who knows. But overall, I think it's just going to be a fun day. Well, guys, we came from about half, maybe three quarters of a mile down that way at the boat ramp. Um, certainly different on this body of water. It's a river that's fairly shallow. So we just took our time, but we pulled up right here to go explore back this way and do some scouting. And right where we pulled the boat up, uh, we, we've been walking all over, but there's deer tracks right here. I'll give you a look at it. So I don't know, is that a good sign or not? There are an absolute boatload of deer tracks right here. And we're still by the river. Just a boatload of tracks. Well guys, we are in the middle of it. This is pretty much uh, everything we've seen so far. We came up off the shoreline and it is just a absolute jungle in here. There's a lot of browse, they're definitely in here. But um, man, it, it'd be impossible to hunt. You get up in a tree up there and you would basically have this little clearing to shoot and that would be absolutely it. So we'll keep looking. Well y'all, we're back at the boat and uh, there were deer tracks everywhere along the shoreline. But as you saw when we got inland from the edge it was just an absolute jungle i'm sure there's deer in there but there was really no trees to set up in that you'd even be able to shoot more than five yards um getting in and out would just be brutal so it's going to be finding that one spot where maybe there's a little bit of an oak flat or good food source uh but so far we haven't found that spot so we're going to keep moving this is about a 200 acre island we're on we're going to keep moving down a little bit and check out some other spots in the same island if that doesn't work out we'll actually load the boat up and uh head down the road to another spot we got planned out. Well, y'all, we uh, kind of gave up on spot number one. It was just a total, absolute... Kind of gave up. Okay, we just completely gave up. It was a jungle. And everything was head high, just absolute jungle. You couldn't even move through it. So we're on to spot number two, next island, a few miles south on the river. And this spot is looks a lot more shallow and rocky, so we're actually going to take advantage of bringing the kayaks. Uh, we just have to go straight across the river, probably only a few hundred yards, and then we'll be up on that next island. So hopefully we have better luck this time. I well, made it across the uh, river on the kayaks. A couple of really shallow spots, it's almost too shallow for the kayaks, but we made it. And so far, we're just here on the bank, but this is looking a lot better. Looks like we should be able to get up in there and uh, take a look around. So hopefully we find something good. Problem will be, if we come back to hunt, is going to be access with the lower water levels at this part of the river. So let's go take a look. What do you say, Nate? I think oh. I'm using my uh, dead cat to clean off my lens. <laughs> He's using his microphone to clean water off his lens. So we were checking out this island here on Onyx and we're like, yeah, it looks like it might have some cut field or something. It's probably like 150-ish or more, if not, no, 200 acres worth of corn. This entire island's 311 acres oh, and my. most of corn. <laughs> Never in my wildest dreams would I thought we would have had corn. So I don't know, we don't know. There's no way to know if this is lease property from a, a, a farmer. I mean, it's public. It's completely public land. It's owned by the Game Commission, so we have every right to be here. We're not trespassing at all. But this is a really nice stand of corn, and uh, it's all in the middle of public. Well, a little update, guys. We uh, are on this island, and we could tell there's some sort of ag on it. And we got up there, and to our surprise, it was probably 200 or 250 acres of corn planted on an island. Totally blew me away. Found a little finger of woods up there with a lot of white oaks and red oaks. It looked like it was going to be our best spot so far. And then we happened to come across a sign. It's probably a 30 year old sign, half grown into a tree and it said, no hunting here allowed. So I looked it up online and the Pennsylvania Game Commission actually says that this is for duck 
What was the word it used? Waterfowl propagation area. Waterfowl propagation area, and there's no hunting except in the late flintlock season. So uh, we're not going to waste any more time here, though we might give the Game Commission a call just to verify, because this is our best spot so far. But we're going to move on to another island a few miles down that looks very similar, but is not listed on their website as being no hunting. So, uh, so far, what are we doing, Nate? Kind of uh, striking twice. out? Striking out twice? Striking out twice. Hey, but it, you know, you get three strikes. So the next one... And you're out. <laughs> Hopefully the next one's better. <laughs> well, it's time for another little status update. We were just headed back across the river in the kayaks and we knew a storm was coming and as we were coming across the river, it really picked up speed and we booked it back and just barely made it back before the rain all started. And so now we're just uh, hanging out. Nate's uh, replying to emails. Social media. All of his average jack archery stuff. Uh, go check it out. Send him an email, something, bother him about archery questions. Please. And um, anyway, it's probably gonna have a little bit of lunch, wait out the rain, and hit at least one more island today. At least hopefully. one more, yeah. yeah. Well, guys, uh, <laughs> as mentioned, the water levels are pretty low today. We're at spot number three, and uh, too shallow for the boat, so we're in the kayaks again. And this is what happens when uh, Nate doesn't wear his muck boots, and it's too shallow to even get the kayak into the shore. So I'm not sure what's going to happen here. I'm not sure if his shoes and socks are coming off or if he's going to make me go rescue him or what. I'm not sure yet. In all seriousness though, we are at spot number three. Uh, brought the kayaks again. Water levels are really low. A lot of places it's not even a foot deep coming across here. Um, this spot looks like it has corn also. We haven't got up onto it yet, but from a distance it looks like it has corn. So I think this island is 270 acres. Uh, there's some wood lot up at the top end, the north end, so we're gonna go ahead and check it out as soon as Nate figures out how to get to the shore. Well, sure enough, we just walked up from the water. You can see the water right there. And we have a massive, massive cornfield. I mean, the other side looks like it's probably 150 yards away. It's the corn! <laughs> it's, it's super long, I have no idea. So, um, Probably gonna head that way, try to find the woodlot, see if we got any acorns or bedding area or what we can find. Uh, yeah, this but, beautiful uh, scenery out here. Oh, it's gorgeous. And this looks somewhat similar to the last island as far as corn, but I think this island is actually legal to hunt on, which too bad about the other one, but hopefully we'll find something good on this one. Well, hello guys. Uh, came across an interesting groundhog here. He got some uh, major aggression issues. He actually started chasing me and I actually had to kick him. Something wrong with him. Well, y'all, uh, after battling the uh, crazy groundhog and the uh, incredible field of corn there, we just popped out to this woodlot. And this is the most open, huntable woodlot we have seen all day, including the other island that we weren't allowed to hunt. And there was a deer right there. No, it was a tree branch. Really? Yeah, whole tree branch just fell. Oh man! I know. I was <laughs> super excited. I, I seriously thought it's there's a, a, a deer. I seriously thought there's a deer bounding out. Anyways, we we haven't really uh, been able to dive in yet. I think there's an oak right there. Maybe I'm not sure. We're gonna dive in here, see if we can't find some oaks for a good fall food source, and mark some trees. Maybe I don't know, but this <laughs> this is probably the best spot, at least first glance that we found so far. So we just gotta dive in and see what we can. Uh, nailed down. All right, so we're running two cameras. Nate's over there filming. Woo! We just went through like 6,000 miles of corn all behind Nate here. Uh, and, and this, the rivers over here, it's just corn. The whole thing's corn. Came from a small wooded finger all the way to this specific island. Saw it on On X. Think it looks like a more open hardwoods like you can see here. I don't want it to be a biological desert, but we can actually see here for about 40, 50 yards to the timber. This is exactly what we're looking for. There's not much way by way of topography. It's still a very flat field in conjunction with all this corn, but there, I mean, this is so isolated. You have to get here by boat. There's no trails getting in here. It's all public land, so you gotta bushwhack. And if we can find anything on here that's any semblance of white oak or red oak, um, or any of the subspecies, if we can find any bedding, this spot right here is priority number one. I'll guarantee you there are some monsters, for PA anyway, lurking around in here. So we're gonna take you through. We're actually gonna get some actual footage of this because this is the first like halfway decent thing we've got all all, all uh, days today. Try to actually show you some actual sign in here if we can find any. Well guys, we've had some fresh rain today so the tracks aren't super fresh, but there's like a super highway. 
running right through here. And a lot of this uh, real wet green uh, undergrowth here, like right up in there. Uh, maybe I'll get a close-up of that later, but it's just browse. Everywhere you look, it's just browse on this uh, low growth of uh, that green stuff. And a lot of tracks in here. So we haven't found the place we would want to hang and hunt, but we're definitely uh, on the right track. I think we got almost a mile of wood line or wood lot up toward the north here. Well guys, we found one of the things we're looking for. Nate's over there vlogging. Here is a monster, monster red oak. And there's actually uh, a stand of red oaks here, some smaller red oaks. The other thing we found is mosquitoes. It's absolutely miserable in that regards, but uh, finding what we're looking for. So gonna keep plunging in. We probably have another half, three quarters of a mile up here to go through this wood lot. Well, we came up through these woods right over here. And right through here, oh, it's overexposed. But right here, there's just a little finger of corn that comes up, probably only 50 yards wide there at its widest maybe. Came up to the tip of it, which is the point we wanted to check out, right at the tip of this corner here, the corn. And right there, a guy has a ladder stand, which everybody does it, but kind of irritates me just a little bit because technically in Pennsylvania, you're not allowed to leave them out all season long. But hey, that's what he's doing. He's probably got a pretty good little spot there. Just come right up the river and pop up into the stand. So for us, we'll just keep on looking for a better spot. Well, as you can see, I'm no longer out scouting. Basically what happened is after the end of that last clip you saw, Nate and I started calculating how long it was gonna take us to hike back over a mile to where we left our kayaks, then kayak back across the river, and then make the two hour drive home. And with both of us having families at home, uh, we just decided it was time to go. Now I have to be honest, Nate did have to twist my arm a little bit on that one. Uh, because there was still a lot of ground that we did not cover on that last island and I was just having a hard time leaving it. I had this feeling that just around the next corner is going to be the perfect hot spot that we've been looking for. But um, it was good that we called it a day because we did get home fairly late. Now what I want to do is I want to wrap up this video um, by going over some of the e-scouting that I did prior to our trip. And I've been using Basemap a lot lately, so I'm gonna get on the computer here and show you some of the features of Basemap that help me actually find these public land spots and the access points. I also wanna just wrap up the video at the very end by sharing with you some of the criteria that I'll probably use in making the decision if I ever actually go back and hunt those spots. Before we get into that, I do wanna share one more quick clip with you that was sort of funny as Nate and I were getting to part our separate ways for the day. Well, just so you guys know, one of the reasons I hang out with Nate is I think he's also a budget sportsman. He drives a Honda Fit, which, ironically enough, actually fits a 12-foot kayak. Listen. No roof rack necessary. Listen. Y'all can laugh, but it works. All right, with all of that said and out of the way, let's go ahead and jump on the computer and take a look at base map and some of the features that actually helped me to find these public land spots. So I've got Basemap pulled up here, and the first thing that I want to mention is that this is the paid version of Basemap. Some of these features may not be available in the free version. The second thing I want to mention is while this is the same river we went to scout, uh, this is not the actual island that we went to scout. And I just want to point that out because I'm not trying to blow anybody's spot if somebody's already hunting this spot or anything like that. Uh, this is a totally different island that I've never been to. I'm just showing you how I actually found the public land spots. Now, within Basemap, you can come over here to the left side and hit Layers. And under the land tab here, you're gonna see there's nationwide government lands. That's gonna take a second to load up, but now you can see that there's uh, colored and outlined spots for different public land sections. And you can automatically see right here that this is part of the state game lands number 254 here in Pennsylvania. Now I can zoom in on that. And you can see this island's called Clemson Island. This is one, like I said, we did not visit, but I can click on that now. And it's going to bring up that that island is 150 acres and it's owned by the Pennsylvania Game Commission. Perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Piece of public land. Now, you can actually see that a lot of these other islands up through here are all public as well. Uh, this little piece is uh, just two and a half acres owned by the Game Commission. This one over here is uh, 33 acres. Again, all owned by the Game Commission. Now, the next thing that I needed to find out is where I could access uh, the river and get on the river from. Now you can see in this particular case, it's already part of the features of the map, like many other features over here in this town, uh, just points of interest that the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission, Clemson Island Boat Access, it's already right there. You can see where the boat access is. But 
If that wasn't showing up, another way to find that would be to come over here to the layers, and instead of going into the land layer, go into the water layer and go to nationwide water access. Now with that layer turned on, you can see that it's showing me different uh, boating access points. You can click on it, and it will tell you the name of it, it will tell you if there's a fee, uh, whether there's a horsepower restriction, um, it will tell you if there's a ramp, uh, sometimes it will even tell you here it is uh, more than 10 parking spaces available and uh, also if you were coming from the east side of the river there there's one on the other side as well and this is the Halifax borough water access again no fee unlimited horsepower uh, there is a ramp there and there is fewer than 10 uh, spaces available so uh, there's some different information here about water access the, those two features are the primary features that I used to be able to actually find my spots. Now, obviously, you can dive in uh, to other layers here in base map as far as uh, topography and all of that kind of thing. But as far as actually finding the spots, those are the two features that really I was using. Now, obviously, what I just showed you is some of the very basic functionality of base map. There are a ton of more features, but those are just some of the very basic features that I used to find uh, the particular public land spots that we scouted on today's video. All right, so I wanna wrap up this video by giving you some of my thoughts about whether or not I will ever go back and hunt those spots that we scouted today. And I have really, really mixed feelings on this because I mentioned from the beginning of the video that this is something I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to go hunt a boat access spot. And these areas that we scouted are exactly what I want. Uh, they're islands. It's not like even a lake or maybe you could access one side from a boat, but you could hike in from another side. No, these are islands that are boat access only. It's the only way you're gonna go out and hunt those spots. To me, that is exactly what I've always wanted, always dreamed of. It's, it just would be amazing to me. There are definitely deer there, which is another positive. Um, you know, we, we pulled up in the very first spot all along that bank. There were so many tracks. It was loaded with tracks. We got up into the thick stuff. There were some trails. There was browse. There are definitely deer in there. Surprisingly though, we never actually saw a deer the entire day. We never jumped a deer. We never heard a deer crashing off through the brush. I just did not see or hear a deer. That doesn't bother me because there was enough sign there to know the deer were there. We were not being especially quiet. A lot of times the wind was not in our favor in the direction we were moving. I just, that doesn't bother me. One of the things that does bother me is that we did not find very much buck sign at all. I think the entire day we maybe saw three buck rubs and that was it. You know, I was hoping to get into a place where we would find a core buck area and find all the buck rubs, just buck rubs galore. Didn't happen. You know. And going over to hunt that spot is a two hour drive from home. It means a boat or a kayak ride across the river. And a, a lot, some of it's very tough access, thick, not trails are not made over on those islands for the most part. It would not necessarily be an easy hunt. And if I was gonna put the effort in to do that, I was really hoping to have a great spot that I felt confident uh, we would have some buck activity. We just did not find that spot. So if I was to go back there, I would have to almost go back willing to shoot a doe because there were some spots that I think we came across that probably have high doe activity areas. Um, the problem with that is here in Pennsylvania, we have a limited number of tags that we can get for antlerless deer and they are management unit specific. So if I get a tag for that area, that will not be a tag that's good for my normal core area that I hunt, which means that now I've taken away one of my tags that I can use here. And for the amount of opportunities that I have to go and hunt over in that area, it probably just doesn't make sense. The only way I would probably go over there and hunt there, at least this year, is if there are enough leftover tags after a couple of rounds of our doe applications that I could get basically an extra tag for over there beyond the normal tags that I get here. That's not likely to happen, but I'm gonna keep an eye on the number of tags available. The other requirement that I would have to be able to go back there would be that the water levels would come up. Now, there's a website online for that particular river that will tell you what the water level is on a certain gauge in the town of Harrisburg. When we went yesterday, the water level was about three and a half feet. Well, that's fine, that's in Harrisburg, but that last island we went to, uh, there were places where the water was well under a foot of water, even out in the middle of the river. 
Now, I didn't mind using the kayak except for one major problem. The wooded portion of that island that actually had some good uh, deer sign was almost a mile north of the boat ramp, which means we would have to paddle against the current for a mile to really be able to get into the timber without having to access through the cornfield, which would be total disaster. Uh, frankly, there was strong enough current even yesterday that I just don't think that we would be able to really make it a mile upstream without being just totally wiped out and probably not even want to hunt at that point. So the only way that we would probably be able to go back and hunt that last island would be is uh, if the water level came up probably a foot and a half and that would probably give us enough water to get the boat and get upstream and get to the access point that we needed. Those two things are huge, huge ifs and honestly are highly unlikely to happen. But if they do, I might just have to at least take one hunt and go over there just because I've always wanted to do it. Hey, I know that was a lot of rambling. If you stuck with me this long, thank you so much for following along to the end of the video. If you're still here, leave a comment down below and let me know, would you take the effort to make that drive and make all the work to get across that island to do a hunt based upon what you saw in the video? Let me know down below. And if you're interested in base map, there will also be a link down below where you can download that. Until next time, remember to get off YouTube and get outdoors into God's great creation.